Hi de ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here this evening. Hey folks, tonight's video is for the new aspiring to be mechanics out there. I want to take you on a tour of my toolbox and talk about the types of tools that you will be needing to purchase if you decide you want to become a mechanic as well. So let's take a look over here. This here is a big toolbox that I have here at home. It is a Mac Maximizer that I have had for many, many years. Let's talk about some of the tools that you will need to get started, okay? You will need a good assortment of sockets and ratchets and extensions and things of that nature. You don't necessarily need everything that I have in this toolbox, but we, you, you will need some good half-inch drive um, metric sockets, standard sockets possibly, um, short and tall, some 3-8 stuff, some quarter-inch drive stuff, a few big sockets like a 36 millimeter, 34 millimeter, some of that sort of stuff there. Let's just look across here and see what we have. Uh, you'll need some kind of torque wrench. Um, this is kind of an inexpensive one just for torquing lug nuts down with. Um, various different ratchets. You know, half inch ratchet, some three inch ratchet, some quarter inch ratchets. Here's one that actually kind of swivels back and forth. That's pretty neat. Safety glasses. Definitely want to make sure you're always wearing your safety glasses because you only get one set of eyes. And it sucks when you get something in your eye that you can't get out. Here is an O2 sensor socket, okay? That might be a tool that you will need um, along the way. There's many things in this box. This is my home toolbox. I don't use uh, this stuff very often. Let's just go ahead and continue going through the drawers here. Here's my wrench drawer. And as you can see, we have some standards, some metrics. We got some big wrenches. Um, we have multiple wrenches here from different sets from years past. We have some more standards over here as well. Um, we have another drawer here full of wrenches. Um, these are kind of some inexpensive wrenches. Um, I picked them up. They seem to work pretty good. Here's some gear wrenches with the uh, ratcheting in. These are very handy to have. That's definitely something you may want to purchase, at least a metric set of those if you get in the business. Let's continue on down. Okay, now we have our screwdriver drawer here. As you can see, we have many, many different screwdrivers, Phillips heads, we, Phillips heads, we have number ones, number twos, number threes, and some uh, straight blades. Also, there's some chisels over here. You definitely will need you a, an assortment of different chisels uh, when you're in the business. Let's go on down to the next drawer. And we have many, many sets of pliers here. A big pair of channel lock pliers. Definitely want to purchase that. You will find that very handy for oil filters, which you'll do a lot of oil changes, no matter where you work at, whether it be a dealership or a tire store or an oil lube place or wherever, you'll definitely do that. These are also great for squeezing back calipers if you're doing brake jobs. Um, there's just a various different types of pliers that you may need to purchase. Um, Let's go on down to the next drawer. Okay, we have some hammers and some big tools here. Um, we have a four pound sledgehammer here and a three pound drilling hammer. Uh, four pound sledge is about the biggest thing that you wanna use on an automobile. Anything bigger than that, you're probably gonna tear something up. Um, a good pipe wrench is always handy to have because you'll find there'll be tie rod ends or something like that that you'll need to really be able to get a hold of to get them freed up to where they'll turn. Um, hacksaw might be a handy thing to have. A pry bar or a full pry bar set would be great. Um, there's a couple of things in here that are more like a specialty. This here is actually a chain wrench to, uh, for holding like a crank damper to break a crank bolt loose. Uh, you may find uh, working if you uh, do a lot of timing belts and stuff like that, you may need something like that in your toolbox as well. Um, here's a lady foot pry bar. Might be a handy thing to have a couple of those in your toolbox. Let's move on down to the stuff that are you don't use quite as often, but it's nice to have a <clears throat> tap and die set. Um, we have various different taps here. A couple uh, 
Let's see a couple pipe threaders here that I've actually made that one one time. Here's some a piston ring compressor. Um, this is a buffing tool, cleaning pad tool. A little zero to one inch micrometer. Pop rivet gun. A couple body tools here. This is stuff that you don't necessarily need to purchase being a new technician but maybe some things that you will acquire over the years. Here's a little vacuum pump for doing AC work. Um, here's an older scan tool. It's actually an OBD2 scan tool. You'll definitely need to purchase uh, one of those if you're gonna work on these newer cars. Um, we have a hole saw kit here, a little vacuum pump for checking vacuum. Uh, I believe this is just a little drill bit set here. Um, Okay, let's move on over here. <clears throat> so this drawer here, we have some air tools. Very important tool to have. You definitely want a half inch drive pneumatic impact wrench, okay? And a three eighths air ratchet. I see a lot of these new guys that get into business and they think, I want cordless everything. Everything needs to be cordless and I don't like dragging an air hose around. Well, I'm telling you right now, if you're gonna be fast and you're gonna make money, you better buy these tools and you better learn how to use them. Okay, our next drawer here, this is basically just a uh, junk drawer. Uh, just some, not necessarily parts I've left off cars, I don't want you thinking that. But you will acquire, you know, extra parts from here, from time to time. Just go and save all your extra bolts. You never know when you'll find something, like here's a brand new caliper pin. Uh, you may find something in here that uh, you may need from time to time. It's always handy to have at least one drawer in your toolbox. Uh, with some extra nuts, bolts, and things of that nature. Down here, we have a rear brake caliper tool kit. We have a no-spill funnel. We have a uh, electric drill right here. We have a battery tester and a couple other tools in here. Okay, so this is our home toolbox, guys. This is a very expensive toolbox. I don't even take this one to work anymore. Um, I have another large toolbox that I use on my job and I brought a couple tools home just to shoot this video with some things that I didn't have in this box that I feel like will be that you may actually need um, if you work where you mount tires okay have your own tire hammer because I can't tell you how many shops I've worked in to where the the shop tire tool gets all messed up usually this end here is broke off you can't even pull a wheel weight off just go ahead and buy your own Put it in your back pocket when you go over to the tire machine to mount some tires. Have your own tool. Take it back. Put it in your toolbox. Okay, a um, couple wrenches that I use on a daily basis is a double box in uh, 13 and 15 with a little bit of an offset. Very handy to have. And a 1214. Those are really handy to have. Um, line wrenches, okay? Let's talk about that. Now, I'm going to talk about a brand on these. These are Snap-on, okay? Now, I highly recommend Snap-on as far as line wrenches, okay? Um, some of the cheaper ones, they will flex, and you'll end up rounding off a line if you get one that's really tight. But Snap-on seems to be the best when it comes to line wrenches. So you may want to go ahead and invest the money on the tool truck with that. Um, a spark plug tool. This right here, I love this thing. I've probably had it for 20 something years, maybe 25 years. It's got a double swivel, 5 eighths for your 5 eighths park plug sockets. And you can get this sucker in just about anywhere. This has been one of the best tools I have. It's actually a Mac brand. I'm sure they still make it, but um, that's very handy to have. Here's another spark plug socket. It's just got one single um, swivel there. That's a pretty good one to have too. A um, couple, you'll definitely need like some snap, snap ring pliers. I don't have very many, but uh, you know, you can buy full sets of those. All different sizes are handy to have. Here is a Pittman arm puller that you may need from time to time. A tubing cutter you may need from time to time. Okay, let's look in these little boxes here. Let's see what we got. This right here is a power steering pump puller kit for pulling the pulley off of a, and reinstalling it onto a power steering pump. That's a specialty tool that you will probably need from time to time. I think I used them more back in the 90s than I do now, but you will need them from time to time. 
this here is a wheel lock remover kit. If you ever get in a car, uh, car that where the customer has lost their wheel locks and want them want to pay you to remove them, you can be able to do that with that kit right there. Here is a veneer caliper, measures in thousandths of an inch. Very handy tool to have. This is an old analog type. They make these in digital now for people that don't know how to read a analog scale. But these are just some of the tools I wanted to show you from work. Uh, let's open this big drawer. I want to talk about one more type of sockets here. These swivel 3-8 sockets. This is something you definitely want to purchase. Um, I have used these, but not this particular set. i got a set at work. But these are snap-on. I've got a metric set. I've got a standard set here. And the 3 8 swivels is definitely something that you're going to need to purchase. And I would buy a good quality brand, whether it be Snap-on or Mac in that. The rest of your sockets can be sort of an off-brand because I've had good success with some of the cheaper brands. These are Cobalts. And uh, I've actually done a video on a review on a set of Ingersoll Rands. Uh, some of this stuff here, it will last you a long time. But on your impact swivels, definitely get a good brand, Snap-on or Mac, something of that nature. Now, friends, let's talk a little bit about getting in the business and having the capital to invest into tools to do your job, okay? Um, you don't have to go out and buy all this stuff at one time. This is stuff that I've acquired many, many years of working. When I first got in this business, I had a toolbox similar to this one right here. It wasn't this exact one, but it was a Craftsman, just like this. You can buy this toolbox for probably, you can catch them on sale anywhere from three to $500 tops for a top and bottom. And I worked in a car dealership when I was 21 years old and I had this exact toolbox, okay? And I started building my inventory of tools. I didn't go on the tool truck and run up a big old amount of debt. I bought as I had the money and I kept investing into my tool set and building to have my own tools to where I could do the job that I needed to do. And that's what I recommend for you. Don't get yourself in a bunch of debt. Just try to buy things slowly and acquire as you go, okay? And friends, I hope you found this video helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Tell a friend about us. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this video, okay? And I'm also going to have Mint Hill Tina. We're going to type up a blog. I'm going to actually make out a list of tools that I think a beginner, beginner mechanic would need to have. And we'll have them listed out on that blog, okay? And we'll also have some links down below to maybe some tool sets that we might find. And we'll have them where you can click on and check them out for yourself. Once again, take care. Join us again tomorrow because we make videos every day. And we'll see you then.